We've been interested in soil health for a long time here on our farm at Table Cape. We've been aware for a long time that good soils uh, are profitable and Bill Coaching showed a direct relationship between soil physical structure and yield uh, many years ago now. It's something we've been interested in but we haven't been making any large leaps towards really improving our soils over that time. After a discussion with local farmer Greg McDonald, who's always got something to say on the matter of soils and soil health and agriculture, he put me on to a few things that have been going on in the United States that um, I had a look at. It became evident that there was quite a large movement towards soil health in the United States and they were starting to do some really interesting things with cover crops. They're using cover crops for many different purposes. Nutrient leaching and erosion control are a couple of the big ones. But there are many, many farmers over there becoming a lot more conscious of their biology. And by feeding their biology through cover crops, they are seeing a lot of beneficial effects for their farming practices. This got me thinking, what are they doing there that we might be able to do here in our red soils? This trial hopes to show the short and longer term benefits to soil health and crop productivity following different cover crop treatments. Here we are out in the corner paddock at Table Cape Farm. Um, we're just sowing our first part of the trial. This is our biofumigan. And the soil here is um, looking fairly cloddy but that's sort of what we expect um, with the history it's got here um, but otherwise it looks quite good where there's no clods this is our John Deere 6120R with a length 3 meter disc and APV 12 volt air seeder how is, and this is how we're sowing our cover crops um, it's new to us, um, we've seen some results of it so far and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. A mixed cover crop seed, in here there's eight different species um, and they're just mixed together in this old seed uh, mixer um, by hand. So we've got, I'll oh, see if I remember, we've got our oats, millet, lupins, chaffel clover, uh, mustard, plantain and nemat in here as, as well as buckwheat. Um, I think that's all of them. And yeah, this um, went through our, through our cedar just fine. Um, and we were planting it at 45 kilos per hectare. Now the seeds don't separate in the, the box um, unless you're doing many, 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 many hectares, over 10 hectares at a time. Um, it's a common misconception that the seeds will settle down to the bottom or the top depending on their size. It's actually about density of the seeds, so the less dense seed will slowly rise to the top, but it does take, the rule of thumb seems to be if you're doing over about 10 hectares, then you'll have seed issues. Um, so in this trial we are doing um, well under two. Um, we just mixed it all together and threw it in the and threw it in, and that we shouldn't see any streaking. Here we're about one week after sowing. Um, you can see there's emergence on a few species here. We've got seem to have I think these are lupins, um, some mustards or some sort of brassica. Um, looks like over here this might be buckwheat coming through and there's just just starting to see some emergence of some other things um, and then there's barley uh, volunteer barley from the last crop that seems to come through here village radish plot this is about one week after sowing uh, we've got a reasonably good emergence um, yeah, and then we've got the volunteer barley, of course, as well. Our 
buy a few bigant mix, the Caliente uh, mustard and Nemat. Um, and we seem to sort of see the difference between here and here. We just had about 30 mils of rain over the last like, two or three days, which is the first real rain we've had in since the end of January. And we're expecting a bit more. Um, I've got the chili radish behind me here, and this is typical of what we're sort of seeing. It's probably not the biggest one, it's probably not the smallest one. This is typical of about two months in the ground now, or just under two months. Yeah, so six to seven weeks. Uh, the tap root keeps going down, uh, and I'll actually go and dig a proper sort in some time and find out how far it's going down. But it does, we did rip this paddock before sowing, and it's, it is getting deeper than the ripped. Um, pan, I guess. Now we're going to cover the trial. It's the 1st of May 2016. Um, I'm standing in the diverse cover crop here. Uh, things are going okay here. There's, it's not quite what we hoped, but it is, it is very interesting nonetheless. We're, we've got all of our mustard is flowering at the moment, which is not ideal. We still hope to have this in the ground for another month or so yet. And our buckwheat is also um, going to head as well, um, which is not ideal. We might have weed issues from those. Um, now this is a, a tip for um, new players, I guess, that yeah, be careful of what seed you use. This mustard is very early maturing which is not what you want in a cover crop. The biofumigant um, mustards with uh, the biofumigant caliente and nemat. Oh, have a look what's going on down here. So you can still see lots and lots of little tiny fibrous roots and typical of these varieties we're seeing Really good fibrous roots. These are still quite young plants and they've been under a lot of moisture stress. But lots and lots of fibrous roots and and still fibrous roots heading down uh, deeper as well. But this should, now everything's had a bit of a drink over the last couple of days um, and the, we should really see, see it taking off. The winter ryegrass that we're using here has surprisingly been partially outcompeted by the barley, which must have been much closer to germination when the seeds were sown. The, despite that, the uh, barley is still putting on its characteristic fibrous roots, which um, should be creating some really nice little structure.